Good morning, everyone. It's always a privilege to be in front of you, but today it's even a more special time for all you Alfafas, and I think for the RPA movement. Exactly 10 years ago, we met our first customer <laughs> for RPA, Rhythm. And we were a very small company at that time. We were just launching our Studio 1.0 in March 2013. And we appealed to a small audience of developers. They were not very excited by our local no-code product. So we thought, well, that was it. It was our last bet. We were working together for 10 years. And I literally thought, this is the end of the company. We have to find some nice jobs and get a life. <laughs> but exactly at the beginning of October 2013, we got a customer request with an anonymous address, like rajesh.yahoo.com. And usually, I, we knew that our customers are coming from this, this is so. At that point, we didn't have any support. We were just some engineers writing code. But I had an instinct to ask one of our engineers to talk to that guy and see what it's all about. After one hour, she came to me saying, hey, actually, this is a large company and you have to talk to him. So I jumped into a call right away. And this guy asked me up front, how do you compare with Blue Prism? And I said to him, I don't know who Blue Prism is. <laughs> Let me search. So I searched online and I got this Side, website that this guy looks boring like typical corporate website with career investors and <laughs> about us. And I told him right away, we cannot compare with them. We are just a small company. They look like a big company. But uh, this guy, Rajesh, was really into our software. So he didn't care about the site. He really liked our UiPath studio. That was the thing that he was after. And the other thing was the company that I mentioned was not flexible enough to work with that much. In retrospect, if you reflect on this, it's kind of uh, unbelievable that at the beginning of what would be a big category like RPA, the company that started that category was not flexible enough. But that gave us an opening. And I want to tell you, uh, the story of UiPath is the story of humility. But it's also the story of bold and fast decisions. And also a story of customer focus. And I want to walk you through some seminal moments that we got during our history to get here. Because you know the saying, you overestimate what you can do in one year, but you underestimate what you can do in 10 years. I couldn't have not underestimated more <laughs> where we are here. So after that initial meeting, this guy offered us to, to go to Chennai and work on a pilot. And it was a big decision for me back then because I had to take basically three of my best developers. We were a company of 10 people. Send them to Chennai for like three months without any promise. They told me, you should do it for cost. So I, but in the end I said that, why not? This is our chance. So they went there, they spent three months, and we built in three months what they tried with the other software to build in one year. And they, they didn't even believe that this is possible. But that's the story how a small company 
but building a great piece of technology. Because we started just with this studio, and it was a great piece of technology, can enter a really big category and can talk to all the best and greatest customers in the world. But we started with something brilliant. And we learned from that first customer, we learned. We learned that it's not enough to create just one automation. You have to orchestrate hundreds, thousands of automations. And it was the right moment when we built our orchestra. And it took us another like two, three years to build orchestra. But at the beginning of 2017, we were ready. We had already the best overall product in the market. Our orchestrator was modern technology built for cloud era and really served our customer needs because we built it exactly per customer's needs. And also another good timing was at the end of 2016, I just met what will become one of my best friends, Asagawa-san, that at that time was in between uh, jobs and he was thinking to, he just heard about RPA and he was thinking to bring RPA to Japan. He always thought that RPA is going to save Japan. So he is a guy that always had in mind, how can I support Japanese society. And I thought initially he is a very strange guy. I, I met him in London after he, he was after a long like 14 hours flight and totally jet lagged. <laughs> and he was blinking. So I thought, well, it's, it's not, I was, I was not sure. But he has a warm personality. And uh, we agreed that he would work part time to bring RPA in Japan. And um, in January 2017, I was, uh, I think, on my second trip to India and my first trip to Singapore to meet that we were already expanding into Asia, but having India as a base. Um, and Koichi called me in, uh, while I was in Singapore and told me, Daniel, I, I just talked to a very big Japanese customer, one of the mega banks in Japan, and they, they are doing uh, a big RPA program. They, they are willing to consider us, but they have to speak to you in person because otherwise they would not trust the company. I said, yes, why not again? I changed my tickets from Singapore and uh, <coughs> I flew to Tokyo. And I always wanted to visit Japan. I was inspired when I was younger by Japanese culture, particularly by a book called The Show that shows the story of uh, an Englishman, you know, in, in Japan during the Tokugawa shogunate and the sh cultural shock of some Western guy into Japan. So I was, I was really into it. I learned a lot even prior to going to Japan about the culture, about their way of behaving. So going to, going to Japan still, I had no idea what I am up to there. But I met this amazing Japanese, Yamamoto-san, that works for SNBC. And at that time, he was in charge of the most ambitious automation program that I heard about. But you were gentle enough to meet me and also have dinner with me. And he introduced me to one of the most amazing Japanese custom, a very bonding experience, to have a dinner of shabu shabu, where you basically cook your food. And he cooked for me. 
So I, I, I felt an unusual connection with, uh, with him. And he described what he wants to, and I told him, I want the son, if you give us the chance, we will invest massively in Japan. Next time I'll come here, we will have six people working full time for us and helping you, dedicated to you. I'm not sure if he believed me or not. But when I, um, when I, I came back to Japan in April 2017, and by the time we had the six people, and we already started to show SMBC how our software is differentiated, and they made the decision to actually replace the incumbents. So they have chosen two companies to work for both attended and unattended, one for each space. And they have decided to replace both with us on the merits of our technology, but also on the merits of our extreme customer focus. Because we were totally there with them, and we learned so much from that experience. To build our software by the requirements of a big, sophisticated Japanese bank opened us the world to the big finance organization. It's no coincidence that after that, in 2018 and 2019, we uh, were capable of selling to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP, Morgan Stanley. But without that initial phone call in Singapore, I don't think it could have happened. So always that took me to reflect on our roots. So I really believe that humility is a core tenet of our culture and the way to, this is the way we build UI part. I think this is why I have the privilege to be here in front of you. And I also have the big privilege to invite here on the stage Yamamoto-san, which I am happy to call my friend. Salut, sunt Cosmin Voicu, Product Owner la UiPath și o să vă arăt câteva exemple de scenarii pentru clipboard de AI, un produs la care lucrăm. Primul exemplu este pentru când vrei să faci check-in la un zbor în care trebuie să-ți bagi numele, prenumele, gen, data de naștere, passport number și așa, și așa mai departe. În mod normal scrii de mână toate chestiile astea. Ceea ce n-a, îți ia câteva minute, nu ți e pe loc. Și, dar cum funcționează dacă ai acest produs, clipboard de aia, este că deschizi pașaportul tău, trebuie să-i faci o poză. Poți să-ți arăți un video cu aplicația de mobil care este super tare. Și deci deschizi pașaportul tău, îi dai copii și atât. Spune aici că s-a copiat, după care te duci unde vrei să îi dai paste. Și te duci aici și dai paste. Și analizează pagina asta și începe să scrie datele în ea. Și așa, în, na, cât a luat? 5 secunde cu tot copy-paste-ul, ai făcut un copy-paste. Și, și atât. <fie>